This video is sponsored by Stamps.com. WWDC has come and gone, and the things that we hoped for, as far as the iPad Pro go, came and went. Or never really happened. Man, look, I, I feel kind of bad about this because I was hoping, much like a lot of you, that the iPad Pro would finally earn its keep. Really, it's been lumped together with the rest of the iPads for perhaps far too long, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But I do feel like we got trolled a little bit because here's the thing. The rumors of waiting until WWDC to see what the true power of the iPad Pro would be were actually kind of invested in some really interesting and very legitimate things that Apple was doing. Like, there were some actual signs here. But they turned out to be nothing. We got trolled. Whether it was on purpose or not, we got trolled. And I'll tell you all about it. Right after this! This, this is... What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name is Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. Watching the iPad portion of WWDC felt a little bit like waking up on Christmas and getting no gifts. Like, except for socks or underwear from your grandma. You know how that felt? You know how you were waiting for the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip? Or something like that, Transformers with the super, super stackable Transformers and you got underwear. That's what today felt like. In a lot of ways, the iPad Pro really should be the first truly mobile hardware from Apple that is professional grade. Like they've set up the hardware for it with the M1 chip, USB-C with Thunderbolt and all the other accoutrements that we'll be talking about. But instead, they just updated the iPad OS, which works across all iPads. Now, before we get into some in-depth portion of the iPad Pro, let's talk a little bit about the iPad. iPad OS is actually for all iPads, not just the iPad Pro, and perhaps this is part of the problem. You see, they're trying to create an operating system that is going to be used by the most amount of people. And there are much more iPad owners of the base level iPads than there are of iPad Pros. I don't think you can argue that at all, especially since they've been out for a lot longer than the iPad Pro has. And the fact that the pricing is so much different. I mean, we're talking about a $300 iPad baseline versus over a thousand, up to $2,000 on an iPad Pro with the M1. That's a large group, that's a difference. That's a huge difference. And I believe Apple has a very specific vision of the iPad that I think today we kind of saw the tip of the hat. Like we kind of saw exactly what it is they're thinking about the iPad. We always hoped that it was the laptop replacement that they keep telling us every year, but it doesn't appear to be a replacement, but perhaps a new accessory. And that was totally clear in one of the demonstrations where they showed the iPad, a MacBook, and an iMac being able to like take your mouse across all three of them. They all just basically became slaves to the iMac. Uh, and even the iPad became a slave to the MacBook uh, in, in the video. Like there was never a point where the iPad was the main thing. And, and then they said something else that kind of made that very clear as well. Swift, which allows you to create apps on your iPad, which is awesome. Uh, is basically Xcode for iPad, basically. I mean, we were hoping to see things like Xcode and, and Final Cut Pro and stuff on the iPad, but what we saw was a very clear distinction that they want specific apps just for the iPad. I envision the Final Cut Pro iPad version to be slightly different than the full version. I never thought they were gonna take just I, Final Cut Pro and just put it on an iPad. I was hoping they would take professional level products and kind of slim them down for touch. But instead, they're just looking for other products altogether. I think that's where we are. I've talked about the iPad Pro a lot on this channel, so if you haven't already hit subscribe, go ahead and hit subscribe and watch some of the videos I've done. I've done uh, the MacBook versus the iPad Pro and a bunch of other things, so make sure you hit subscribe on that and I'll leave a link for some of those videos in the description below and in the end screen. I, I, I kind of been all over this thing. I thought we had a real professional mobile device, but we got trolled. Let me tell you how. First of all, there's nothing here that takes advantage, at least in what we can see, of the M1 processor. And I suppose it would be naive to think that they would put anything like that into an OS. Because again, the operating system is covering all iPads all the way back to the iPad Air 2, which is many years old. We're talking super old hardware. So for them to kind of tweak anything for the upper echelon versus the much larger portion of user base, I mean, would be a little bit kind of silly to think. But we were hoping out for it. I mean, why else would you charge up to $2,000 for a tablet? For professionals. Unless you're going to do something professional. And instead of getting something that felt like a full refresh or something like that for the operating system, like, I think iOS 15 looks amazing, but iPad OS, 
felt like, you know, here's a couple of cool things. I mean, they're okay. You probably, I mean, you might use them once or twice, but that's it. You're not gonna use them for pro apps, that's for sure. And Apple does call this a professional device and they have been since the 2018 iPad Pro. As a matter of fact, if you own the iPad Pro 2018 or 2020 version, stop, just don't stop there. Just don't buy the M1 version of the iPad Pro. There's no reason right now to buy that thing. The 12.9 does have a mini LED, but to be honest, like, it's not worth the money. It really isn't in any significant way. Trust me when I tell you, I've done the comparison. I did a video where I talked about that. I even sold my iPad 2020 version. I, I took it, I packaged it, I shipped it, went to UPS and spent $87 to ship it. I spent $87 to ship that thing. Man, I should have used stamps.com. Yeah, could have saved a whole bunch of money. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Are you tired of going to the post office and waiting in line? Are you still paying full price for postage? Well, thanks to stamps.com, you don't have to anymore. Mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. Send letters, packages, and pay less, a lot less, with discounted rates from USPS, UPS, and more. Stamps.com brings the services of the US Postal Service and the UPS right to your computer. It's a must have for any small business, whether you're a side hustle Etsy shop or a small office sending out invoices. Simply use your computer to print any US postage 24 seven for any letter, package, or any small mail anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just schedule the pickup or drop off. It's that simple. With stamps.com, get discounts of up to 40% off post office rates and 66% off of UPS shipping rates. There's no risk. And with my promo code, TravisMCP, you will get a special offer that includes four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com and hit the microphone at the top of the homepage and put in TravisMCP. That's stamps.com promo code, TravisMCP. So you might be asking, Travis, how did they troll us if they never said they were going to do pro apps. I think it was in the details of the launch of the M1, not just because the M1 processor works in desktops and Final Cut does work on an M1 processor. I mean, that was kind of a hint, but the fact that they actually showed out with how much RAM they put into these iPads, like an unnecessary amount of RAM, up to 16 gigs. That part never made any sense to me or most other people who looked at this to say, iPads have never been a big RAM holding piece of hardware. I actually kind of talked about this a while back. Check this out. Um, the only time you really ever hear Apple talk about RAM is on their desktops and their laptops. They never mention it on their phones or their tablets because you're not supposed to worry about it. You just buy that tablet. You don't have to worry about a configuration other than storage and that's it. You're done, you move on. But for the first time that I can ever remember, during the presentation of the iPad Pro, they actually announced a RAM configuration for the iPad Pro. Why? Now, when you saw the one and two terabyte versions of this tablet, you thought, okay, yeah, I mean, I guess you just wanna put more uh, video content on it that you can edit and such. I mean, I guess that makes sense. But uh, RAM doesn't make any sense because the iPad OS works on two gigs of RAM. I mean, by the way, iPad OS is supported by some very old iPads that only have two gigs of RAM. So why do you need, hold your horses, 16 gigs of RAM, up to 16 gigs of RAM. Let's, let's dig into that a little bit. The base models get eight gigs, which by the way, is still a lot of RAM. A lot of desktops today ship with eight gigs of RAM. Uh, 16 gigs is ridiculous. And the only kind of thing, the only time you see stuff like that, especially on phones, is Samsung for the most part. And that's because they're flexing. They're basically doing a spec flex, which other than processor, Apple doesn't spec flex. They don't spec flex. So why for the first time ever, let's be clear about this. For the first time on iPads, have they told you how much RAM this thing can go up to? By the way, two configurations, an eight and a 16. When have they ever done that? I think they're gonna try to make this thing a fully fledged production powerhouse. Now, before, before you jump on me and say, no, there's no way that's is, let, let's, let's think about this for a minute. First of all, look at some of the other specs. Why do you have to have a mini LED, which is really good for HDR production and editing, hello, uh, and have the storage space and the RAM space to be able to edit those videos? LumaFusion doesn't need 16 gigs of RAM, but I can tell you an editing software that loves 16 gigs of RAM, and that's Final Cut Pro. In a lot of other professional level software need the extra RAM, which is one of the reasons why most people said Mac OS would never come on an iPad because there's just not enough RAM. And that USB-C is now Thunderbolt. Why? If this is just a tablet and it's only gonna use the charge and to move over some files every so often, why do you need Thunderbolt? 
you don't. So the question still remains, why did they give us eight and 16 gigs of RAM? Like, I mean, I guess this thing's gonna be supported for the next eight or nine years based on the support of iPad OS, but who cares? Like, who cares? I really feel like Apple has painted themselves into a corner with this without giving us any type of professional level apps. This thing becomes an overly expensive tablet. There's something that I just can't recommend anymore. I, I literally can't recommend this thing anymore to anybody. At especially over $2,000, I literally have no idea or reason why you would ever spend $2,000 on an iPad. Why did Apple think that this was a good idea? I don't get it. Now, it doesn't mean that these apps can't still come. They still absolutely can, but it certainly doesn't look like it's going to happen. And I think any purchases from this point forward should be made looking at the product for what it is now and just giving up all hope. As it is, the operating system runs on iPads with less than three gigs of RAM. I mean, this... This is a mind bending thing if you think about this. Why do I need 16 gigs when everything that you saw for iPad OS will work on an iPad Air 2? I mean, it makes no sense at all. Why would someone buy the iPad Pro? And moving forward, I, I feel like, how are tech YouTubers gonna look at this next year? Are they really gonna look at the next version of iPad Pro as anything other than an expensive piece of hardware that shows you what could be done? with an iPad if Apple ever decided to unlock its features? Honestly, without pro-level apps, I have no idea how they're gonna market the iPad Pro anymore or any future versions of the iPad Pro. The last three versions are good enough to last forever, especially if apps are not gonna take advantage of all the hardware that's stuck into, especially the M1 version of the iPad Pro. I just don't get it. If I was on the marketing team, I would be upset <laughs> at the engineering team who's upset at the people making these decisions for software. Because at the end of the day, you've kind of painted them in a corner. Yeah, have the fastest tablet ever that can only do Instagram and, and iMovie and stuff. It just doesn't make sense. I thought Apple was smarter than this, or maybe they are, because maybe they outsmarted all of us. I honestly don't see the point of the iPad Pro anymore. I really just don't. I am keeping my M1 iPad Pro because I edit my videos for my channel on it and I have it purchased and paid for. There's no reason for me to do anything else with it so I'm not gonna get rid of it. It doesn't make any sense for anyone to come to me to say what type of iPad should I get and me ever recommend an iPad Pro, it just doesn't. Unless you want the 2018 or maybe the 2020 version because you can get a great deal on them and you want 120 hertz, fair. But the M1 iPad is just a no-go for me anymore. I just can't recommend it. If you have it, I'm sure you're enjoying it. I'm sure it's great to you. But at this point, one of the main reasons that seemed obvious that why it should have so much tech built into this thing is not the case. And it's hard to accept that. Perhaps we trolled ourselves by looking too much into the specs. Perhaps Apple trolled us by showing us specs that they never really showed before on their tablets and knew that we would take the bait. I don't know. I mean... I guess if none of those rumors came up, then people wouldn't have purchased the iPad Pro, the M1 version, maybe in, in such excitement as many of them did as many people were waiting to see what happened at WWDC. And maybe tech YouTubers are part of the problem. Again, I actually said I thought that maybe that was a possibility. I really did. And I'm completely confused. Why don't you tell me in the comments below what you think? Did Apple mess up? Or did we mess up? Who trolled who? Oh, well. Check out some of these videos while I go try to figure it out. Peace and love.